Hello, everyone, and welcome to a popular investor interview with Jim Sum Lee. He is one of our popular investors who has had some really, really good returns in his trading accounts. He's been trading since about 2004. So introduce yourself and tell our listeners a little bit about you. Hey, hi. Thanks. Thanks for having me here, Henry. Henry. Uh... I first started investing during the 2014 oil crisis. So many of the analysts during that time were saying that the cheap oil is going to help uh, with the airlines to make better profit. Uh, so what they were saying uh, sounded really logical to myself. Hence to try to gain some money, uh, I bought into one of the most uh, popular a uh, low-cost airline in the Southeast Asia region, uh, Air Asia. However, things were however things were going uh, in the opposite direction uh, of <laughs> what the analysts uh, were saying. So, from that incident, I have realized that uh, it's important for myself to have my own analysis as well, instead of just relying on on their opinions or the analysis available online. Uh, yep, so that's how I got into investing. So you you said there a little bit about oil. Now, at the present moment, oil is, is, is pretty low and there's not a whole lot of demand about it. You also mentioned airlines as well. So do you see much of a correlation between you starting trading in 2014 to actually now what's happening in the market? Um, could you be more specific about uh, the question? As, as you see that, you were talking about that airlines are quite cheap, whereas at the minute, airlines are also massively cheap. Is that, are, are you seeing similarities the way the market had dropped in 2014 to the way the market has dropped at the present moment? At the present moment... Um, I think the main reason going, the main reason that the airlines are going really uh, bad right now, it's more towards the pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen, rather than the, the 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 main reason coming from from the oil crisis. So I guess, I mean, in my opinion, the main thing that uh, the 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 airlines uh, are going really cheap now. I mean, cheap. It's not exactly the word because uh, it's it's it depends on on each of uh, our opinions. Um, so the main reason is that people are seeing that the pandemic is causing the travel uh, traveling uh, and the frequency using airlines. Uh, they the frequency would not recover so quickly. So hence, we see the drop in the airlines rather than just the oil crisis itself. Yeah, that, may, that makes sense. Now, why did you become a popular investor? I am delighted to know that uh, people are actually looking up to me as a role model to help them in, in gaining financial and also investing knowledge. Being a popular investor, it's definitely a validation for myself and my strategy as well. Yeah. And, and how did you get into investing in the first place? Uh, um, I know you're now a popular investor and doing extremely well, but what, what brought you to in trading? How did you get into trading in the first place? I know you talked about 2014. Um, oh. You, you mean that uh, how did I get into trading, investing? Yes. Um, so the during the 2014, that was when I that, that was when I got in touch with the stock market uh, because it was quite uh, a, a big news that the, the oil crisis. Uh, is causing the oil to be really cheap. So um, many, yeah, as you can, we can see from the news that uh, many of the analysis are regarding the airlines and all. So 
why did I get into trading or investing? It's definitely that uh, uh, I, I saw that as an opportunity for myself to gain uh, uh, to gain extra money from from investment. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so that's, that's the so main. That, that... So that's how you got into trade. So now, when your trading strategy uh, has your trading strategy changed over the recent market? Because as we know, at the present time, the market is pretty volatile. There is a lot of stuff going on. Um, and has your has your strategy changed over the pandemic with the likes of coronavirus? Um, I would like to look at investing from the long term basis. Uh, by long-term basis, I do not mean that we should buy into a company and then we just uh, leave it there for years or even uh, decades. Uh, why is that? In this fast-changing era, uh, even behemoths uh, could easily be overtaken by other more innovative uh, companies. So it is crucial for, for everyone to continuously learn about the ongoing changes in our ways of living uh, rather than just uh, doing uh, research, uh, which may be reading the news, uh, reading some analysis uh, available online. I think it's also important to be observant about what is happening or what is changing in everyone's uh, life. As an example, uh, the kids uh, nowadays, they are very good in using the TikTok, uh, which is yes. something I'm still struggling with. Uh, as you can see, like many news coming out from, from, from US regarding this uh, TikTok issue. Yeah, so you have almost 3,000 copiers. Now, one of the big things that we have to do with, with copiers is build trust. Now, how do you build trust or how do you um, let new traders know that you are someone who is who's worth following or worth copying? So one of the things that I have noticed is that usually the copiers, they start to lose uh, trust after some volatility. <laughs> So I would like to take this opportunity, uh, this chance, to point out to everyone that uh, volatility is very normal and common in the stock market. The valuation in the long term will definitely reflect the underlying business or the prospect of the companies. So it's important to have rationals to, to back up on your investments rather than treating them as uh, gambles. For myself, I would say that I, I, I look at every investment uh, based on some uh, foundations or, or, or things to back up uh, their valuations. So one of the things that um, you've said there is that you evolve Okay, that you as as the market changes, things things continue to change. So, uh, has your strategy changed in that time? And um, to say now, in the last six months, um, I I I would say that the main foundation is still is still that I look at investing from the long term perspective rather than uh, treating them as uh, something that I gain today, I lose today, I mean, I lose tomorrow. I am more concerned about the company's uh, prospects or how well their businesses are going to do in going forward in, in, in maybe years or, or even months. Yeah, so that's part of the uh, most important thing that I look at. Okay, so you say to me that you're sort of a long-term trader. You you hold on to stocks that are long-term. So, at the present moment, over the last three or four days, we've had a big, huge sell-off on, say, the Nasdaq, the S and P. They've all pulled back, which means that that is affecting most stocks. 
Now, I know, I know personally, my phone, I keep getting text messages off everyone. Henry, what's happening to the market? Henry, what's happening? Mm-hmm. Now, is this something that you expect or need to happen in the market for you to jump back into new trades? Or is this a crash? Is this, how do you explain what's going on at the minute? I guess the thing about the stock market is that uh, people tend to overreact or, or over expect when things are booming and they start to get really upset or they start to under expect when things are very gloomy. So I would say that volatility is definitely a part of the stock market. So when you say, is, is it expected? I would say it's definitely expected in some ways. It is just that no one would know when the next volatility is coming or how big uh, the next one is coming. So when, so, yeah, so I guess, yeah, yeah, sorry. Go so you, you're a long-term trader. So uh, how long do you hold on to your stocks for? And then I suppose, how do we know when to get out? If you're a long-term trader, is it a year? Is it two years, five years, 10 years? How do you know how to get out then? Um, Yeah, that's a very tough question, I would say. Uh, I do not have uh, an exact answer for this question because uh, usually I hold the stocks that that I deem to still have upsides until I think that's another option or another company that I think to have a better potential. And so I would say it really depends from from time to time. And and it really depends on many factors as well. To answer this question, I would say no one can be 100% certain that every single one of their investments to be successful. Hence, <laughs> diversification is definitely one of the ways to navigate through through the potential investment mistakes and all. So you've said something there that has, has, has actually piqued my interest. You've said that you could hold on to a trade and then you, you never know which is the, the best time to get out of it. But what you would do is you would look around and see if there's a, another trade that has better potential. But... Would you then close half the position that you have on your original trade and then put the the half that's closed into the new trade? Or would you close the full trade and then put the whole amount of money on the next particular trade? It depends from, from each company or from time to time as well, I would say. So that's no... Uh... Uh, a definite uh, strategy, uh, or even, or even a, a a way that I'm going to do. So I would really look at many of the factors, including including uh, how is the trend in, in in the option, the 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 the, the potential stock that I'm looking at. How is the trend going? Uh, and yeah, many more factors. I would say. So. Well, so, would so I close you're, you're... All, would I close all one time? Um, yeah, it, it really depends from time to time as well. Okay, so you're a, you're a fundamental trader, and I'm sort of a technical trader. Now, something that all our listeners all all want to know is where where do you get your fundamental news? Is it is it literally Google or or where do you where do you get your fundamental news from? I for this question, I would say uh, the the research is everywhere. Even like uh, what's happening in your friends. Uh, what what are the changes in your friends' uh, living uh, lifestyle? Uh, maybe they used to subscribe to some uh, some some uh, you, you know before Netflix, people were using the TV, uh, and after Netflix, uh, many people are using Netflix as the option to watch movies. So I guess Google is definitely one way to look at the analysis. Uh, 
Uh, and yeah, definitely looking at people around you uh, to know about the lifestyle changes. Okay, so how long do you um, expect or how long wouldn't be a thing? So what do you expect or the outlook for the next half a year to year on the stock market? Are you expecting it to continue growing as it's been growing? Or do you expect a massive sell-off, a correction? Or to kind of phrase that the likes of Bloomberg and all them like to say a market crash? Are you expecting that to happen? Oh, always, I would say that always in our market, uh, there are definitely two groups of people, one being on the bull side and definitely the other one on the bear side. So I am aware that many of them are actually saying that the tech uh, sector, it's, it's overvalued. Where do I stand? I would say that I am. I, I. I. I have noticed that many of the industry are going weak due to this pandemic, but the tech sector is definitely still the sector that I like the most, as the world is adopting the tech faster than ever. So even even there is a crash going forward, uh, I do not see the end of the road for the tech sector. So I'm not too worried about the long-term prospect of the tech sector. So when we when when we say about tech, it's it's a very wide term, I would say, because uh, in our current world, you have to adopt, uh, you have to technify your 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 companies uh, as a part of your strategy. Otherwise, you would be eliminated in, in our in our world. For example, like when we talk about eToro, it's a financial services uh, company. Yet, you uh, eToro is adopting tech as a part of the strategy. So, tech itself is a very wide term, but tech is definitely the thing you have to look at uh, for the companies. Yeah, no, tech, tech is definitely where it's been at for the last, um, for I'd say 2020, it's been it's been huge. Now, li like you say, we, we don't see any difference in the outcome um, over the next one quarter, even two quarters in the likes of the tech sector. So why then has the market dropped over the last three or four days? Why, why is it dropped so rapidly over the last three or four days then? If we still expect and the tech sector to continue driving the market? I, I guess uh, that's a question that everyone would try to rationalize. Uh, so before the crash, everyone would think that it's still going well. Until the crash, then people start to rationalize what's happening uh, with, with the market. Uh, is it overvalued? Uh, is, it, is, it, uh, is the valuation too high? Uh, how is the prospect going forward? So, when you when you when you are asking uh, why what happened to the stock market uh, due to this recent crash, um, for myself, I think that it's it's as mentioned earlier, volatility is definitely uh, a part of the stock market. Um, so, it's um, you. you so as mentioned, it's definitely expected. We we wouldn't know when the next one is coming or how big the next one is coming. Uh, so as we see across the whole year, we can see that tech is still higher than, than before March, which is a valid thing because uh, pre-pandemic, uh, the tech is still, uh, many of the companies are still not adopting uh, tech technologies, but after this, during this pandemic, many of the companies realize that uh, they have to adopt tech as a part of their business to continue forward. So yeah, no, uh, when you look I, at I, I over agree. the period, yeah, yeah. You, when you look we at have every, period, everyone. 
we have everyone in the city there coming in, adopting the likes of Zoom, DocuSign, Adobe, stuff like that. There, it's, it's there. Everyone is now is using some sort of tech to to actually yeah, get in and, and and yeah, absolutely in their in their daily life. And that that's one of the things that's that that's really really cool about what's what's going on. Yes, the market's going up, but it also means that everyone is using. It. I see my nan. She's using Zoom at the minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. So, and now, not advice, but have you got any messages out there for people who now want to to start copying you? I I guess the thing that I would like to emphasize again is that it's really important to to have a mindset to look at investing from the long term perspective. Uh, and to get there, definitely the short-term fluctuations or the volatilities will, will definitely come again. Um, so it's it's important to have that mindset to look at look at investing as a long-term thing. You 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 can't expect you 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 jump in and you jump in into the stock market today and you expect quick profit from 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 it uh, tomorrow. Rather than uh, looking it as over over a period of time, like years or uh, or, or even decades, and so, yeah, finally, I I I, I think it's I have written some posts uh, about this uh, mindset. So oh, for the potential copiers, it's it's definitely advisable to to take the chance to read through everything in my profile. Okay, so. A questionnaire for the audience. What do you think was the biggest surprise stock of the year? The biggest surprise stock of the year, I would say it's it's Tesla. Uh, before the March crash, people were expecting the factories to close and they wouldn't have the productions to be so so well. And hence, we, we, we saw that the crash of Tesla from 1,000 to, to around 400. And mm. during the, the June report, people start to see that it's, the demand is still there and the production is not going down. So we could see that the, the, after the report, Things are really uh, things look really favorable for Tesla until like the few the past few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, the, but the thing about it is, it, it uh, I love I love getting it. I love having a pullback. It, it it means that we can go shopping. We can we can actually now buy into these stocks again at a much discounted rate so look I, 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 I me personally I love the likes of those and um, now another question from the audience is would you think that oil or aviation is a good sector to actually go in and invest in at the right at the minute because they are pretty low at the minute is this is this a good time to invest which, which, which stocks are you talking about again sorry a, a, airlines or oil stocks airlines or oil stocks Yes, I, I, in my opinion, I think the the airline industry it's really fragile, um, because there's so many competitions in in the airlines. The main thing that the consumers are looking at is just the price, the 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 price that uh, they can afford. So I would say. The airline, well, I I would definitely say that uh, the airline industry is not going to be there. It's definitely going to be still there, but it's it's a very competition intense industry. So would I look at it? Um, well, my my favorite is still the tech sector. Unless I I can see that uh, there's some there's some uh, very very impressive strategy from the management to, to adopt 
any kind of tech uh, in their in their deck in their strategy to to, to attract the consumers. Well, well, for now, I am I'm still more focused in in much of the tech stocks like like yeah facebook uh, apple google yeah the fangs yeah yeah so when we have now started to see a new phase of stimulus a new phase of checks being sent out in the us to everyone so do you think that the new stimulus checks that are being sent out in in the us do you think that will will start a new rally in the in the tech sector um i well if it's i i think it's it's something that is short term in the end a stock market always move uh, very quick and and it it's more towards the expectation rather than what has already happened so what's coming from from the stimulus i I'm quite confident that it's already reflected into the stock market. So it's it's still more towards a prospect rather than what has already happened. Now, there is a, a massive inverse correlation between US jobs and the stock market. Now, do you think that's going to have an effect on the, the stock market moving forward? Or do you think that the stock market is going to continue trending? Because if, if people haven't got jobs, they, they can't afford to, to, to buy stocks, can they? It's, it's a very tough question, I would say. It's, well, 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 yeah, you can say that when people aren't having enough money, they come buy into stocks. But in the end, if the companies are doing well, um, uh, whether it's coming from the other part of the world or in U.S. itself, the, the valuation will still reflect to, to the underlying business and prospect in the end. So rather than... So as I was mentioned, as I was saying, it's it's really hard to predict what's going to happen in days time or even months time. Because in we should be more focused about a longer period in the stock market, uh, like years, because it would reflect the, the, the true valuation in the end. So how do you manage a risk portfolio if your portfolio is not very diverse and with the, and you're afraid of the China US conflict escalating into into a bigger problem so how would how would you how would you manage your risk on that side uh, so so if my portfolio is not it, so your question is, uh, how do I manage to the risk uh, as my yeah, portfolio? So it, it's yeah. Very... Well, it, 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 it's sort of, if we continue to get the escalation of the China, the US trade war. Now, you said that a lot of tech. So imagine you're invested heavily in US tech. Now, would you diversify that? Because we could have, we could have um, a lot of U, US stocks banning in China, we could have a lot of, of China banning U.S. stocks, which means then that's a huge drop off in people using their products. So, how would you manage that portfolio or the risk on that side if that escalates higher? Well, yeah, I I, I would say that yeah, definitely diversification is one of the ways uh, to navigate through through this uh, uh, volatile or un, un, unpredictable events. Uh, diversification, like uh, investing in both uh, U.S. markets and also the China market, and definitely, even when we talk about tech sector, as I was saying, uh, it's tech, tech, tech word. It's a very wide term because it's inclusive of, yeah, Itoro, the financial services, the insure tech, like Lemonade. That's a uh, that's a new IPO recently, 
uh, what else? Like yeah, Tesla, the the automotive. You you can have the AI in in the cars, and definitely social medias and things like that. So, is it diversified enough? Um, I would say, I it, it is in certain ways because tech is something we we that's going to to remain in, in, in going forward. So yeah, tech is something that I look at. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Is there anything you want to say to our to our, our listeners? Where can they find you? Is there any extra stuff that you do where where they can, where people can actually read your stuff and get in contact with you? Um, yeah, you can definitely uh, read through the posts I have written previously on my profile, and and definitely Itoro is the platform you can look me on. And I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank all of you, uh, Henry, and especially Daya, as she has been really helpful to myself. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's all I want to say. And if anyone wants to um, come in on any of the trading schools we, we, we run or the webinars or anything like that about the educational, there's a, a link on your on your on your dashboard there just click on that so eToro trading school and you can join me in any of our upcoming um trading events so thank you very much everyone and i hope you have a lovely day thank you bye-bye thanks bye, -bye. bye.